Good afternoon, Block 3. And today we're going to be talking about the Boston busing riots that took place between around 1974 to about 1988. It started with an effort to desegregate Boston public schools by transporting African American students from predominantly black communities, such as Roxbury, to predominantly white communities, such as South Boston, or, or particularly South Boston High. This was after Brown versus Board of Education. So public schools in the United States were already supposed to be desegregated. And Boston's effort to desegregate their public schools was um, implemented through busing policies. The reason why certain districts were predominantly African American and others were predominantly white had a lot to do with the redlining of districts that took place in the late 60s, just before 1974 when the Boston bus and riots had just begun. Now, a big part of the riots uh, began between 1974 and 1980 with the parents of white schools, particularly at a school like South Boston High where most of the major riots took place. Violence increased and students started demonstrating alongside with their parents. The parents would complain to the school board, complain to the principals, complain, complain to the school committee that they were having too many African American students come into their schools where they felt comfortable as an all white population. And this really helped to represent the uh, racial tensions that still existed after Jim Crow legislation was ended and even after Brown versus Board, Ed board of Education. Now when we talk about the riots, these were actual riots outside of schools um, that took form in things like even sit-ins, parent protesting, and a lot of the times the protesting would clash because we had protesting on both sides. Protesting for the desegregation of schools and protesting by predominantly white parents who wanted their schools to be segregated, who felt that an influx of the African Americans into their children's school system meant awful things such as bringing in diseases or bringing in an unhealthy population of people into the classroom setting along with their children. Uh, other forms of these riots took into actual fighting between both sides of the fight, um, between African American parents and um, white parents, and also uh, on buses between the students of white students attacking African American students uh, because their parents didn't support the desegregation of schools. And a big popular form of protest by both white students and parents during this time was throwing rocks at the buses that would transport African Americans from inner city communities that were predominantly African American into white school systems. So buses would have to transport students all the way from a, a predominantly black community like Roxbury down to you know South Boston High where most of the students were um, white and that was quite frankly a, lar a long commute and it was a larger issue for the busing companies as a, whole, as a whole to have to transport a lot more kids every day, make a lot more stops every day and have to travel a much longer distance which meant paying bus drivers more and also which meant you know, um, paying more for gas. So a lot of the white parents would throw rocks at the buses as they came into the city as a way of, you know, protesting, stoning the buses, if you will, in a, you know, informal protest of the desegregation of public schools. And that's where, you know, then you would see the, the uh, response from the African-American community uh, physically fighting back. Now, Gerald Ford, the current president of the United States at the time of the Boston busing, was aware of the segregation problems within the education system. However, he was opposed to forced busing as a solution. He did not see that the court systems were working well with the education boards. He saw, that he saw a problem with collaboration between the different branches of government. The following is a special report from CBS News in Washington. Here is CBS News White House correspondent, Dan Rather. Good evening. President Nixon requested network broadcast time tonight to discuss part of the nation's race problem, school busing for integration. The president requested this specific hour for his presentation. The request was made after Tuesday's presidential primary election in Florida, but the White House says the request had absolutely no connection with the Florida vote. The president is expected to talk approximately 15 minutes he will be speaking live and direct from his White House Oval Office.
Good evening. Tonight I want to talk to you about one of the most difficult issues of our time, the issue of busing. Across this nation, in the North, East, West, and South, state, cities, and local school districts have been torn apart in debate over this issue. My own position is well known. I am opposed to busing for the purpose of achieving racial balance in our schools. I have spoken out against busing scores of times over many years. And I believe most Americans, white and black, share that view. But what we need now is not just speaking out against more busing. We need action to stop it. We hear about the Boston busing riots that you really don't see with desegregation efforts throughout the you know, past of American history was that most of the desegregation efforts were centralized on non-violent civil disobedience. But a lot of um, the Boston busing riots actually escalated to violence directly from um, when schools were desegregated. This process wasn't necessarily done through um, peaceful protests, through silently protesting through schools. This was an effort led by the state, not ran from the people. So this wasn't a populist movement. This was something done at the state level, an effort to end segregation. Um, so again, a lot of the protests were violent and there weren't as many sit-ins or as, many, um, as much picketing on behalf of the African Americans as we've seen in other protests um, for desegregation in the United States. And again, it's important to note that this was after Brown versus Board of Education when the desegregation of public schools in the United States should have already taken place. Now, Judge Garrity, the judge at the time of forced busing within the Boston school system, knew that there were flaws with the idea, but he was too proud to admit his errors. As a result of the uh, busing of African American students into white communities, you saw a sharp decline in the enrollment in Boston public schools between 1974 and 1988 when these riots were taking place. This is also a time in what's referred to as the white flight of white Americans, particularly in Boston, um, fleeing the inner city and moving out to the suburbs and what's also referred to as suburban sprawl which um, exponentially increased between the period of 1974 to 1988. One student that was transported from Roxbury High, Regina Williams, quoted, I did not know anything that was in store for us, but when I got there, it was like a war zone. The Boston school system is scheduled to begin busing Thursday in compliance with the federal judge's integration order. Opponents of the busing plan shouted their bitterness at a rally today and refused to listen to the man regarded as the state's most popular politician. Jackie Castleberry reports. Eight to 10,000 parents and children came to Boston Common to protest the court ordered busing. They carried signs, sang songs, and heard angry anti-busing speeches. One of their targets, pro-busing Senator Edward Kennedy, tried to speak, but parents blocked his path to microphones and refused to hear him. Can I, can I speak? Are you going to, isn't part of the our The people system? don't care to hear you. Well, I think... Block him! Bust your kids, Teddy! As Senator Kennedy retreated toward his office, the crowd began to push, hurling eggs and insults. Just as the senator reached shelter inside, the crowd rushed, pounding and then shattering a glass window. After more speeches, the crowd ended today's protest singing, God Bless America. Jackie Castleberry, CBS News, Boston. One of the first students to be a part of the desegregation of Boston Public Schools was Jean McGuire, who also happened to be the first African-American uh, candidate to be elected to the Boston school community in the 20th century. Now, according to the former NAACP president, Ken Guskin, during that time, white schools received about $450 of funding per student at South Boston High, as opposed to the $250 of funding per student at Roxbury High. Now, this crisis continued to get worse, but Mayor White still stood by, je by the judge's decision. During the 
this time, whether there were rare nonviolent protests or violent interactions between whites and blacks in the city of Boston, African Americans were the ones who received the majority of the damage, meaning that oftentimes police would fail to step in when African Americans were being either beaten or had rocks thrown at them in public. And you had very rare cases where police, were, white police officers were actually taking part in the beating of African Americans in public. Um, and these beatings by no means were um, sane. You had people being stabbed with flagpoles. You had people being stabbed with knives. There were very knives. There were very rare cases where there were guns involved. So these were uh, definitely some of the most violent protests we had seen in the city of Boston. And what you could say, really, um, moving past back towards the civil rights movement since the Revolutionary War, we had this type of violence going on in the center of Boston.